I'm pleased to be here today. Uh, thank you uh, for the invitation. To I apologize about my English. It's not as well as I would like to be, but I'm going to try my best to translate uh, the juridical institutions into English. So uh, let's get started with the reason why I chose this topic. It is about uh, the conviction of Lula was just affirmed by the Court of Appeals this past week, and uh, by uh, unanimously. So this is one of the reasons of my choice, because now it's likely that he can run for the presidency, which would be a very complicated situation for the Brazilian politics, because we don't have a, co a candidate that is running for presidency that can uh, represent very well uh, the current situation that we are experiencing. I know Brazil is very divided. This is one approach of the narrative. We have others going on there. And me, my colleagues, we are publishing and we are studying about this topic, especially the juridical approach, because it's very specific to know if the conviction was under the due process law clause and if it was according to our constitution. Uh, one of, one of the scholars in Brazil, called Lenin Streck, raised the issue that if the judge needed 2,038 pages to make his conviction, he could have acquitted Lula in six pages. So if you need 23 pages to say that you are not biased by the case, there is a reason to consider that maybe you are. So this is another issue as well the venue, the proper venue, because this case, um, specifically about Lula, was all developed in the um, trial judicial court in Curitiba. All, many, many people involved there, and the case started there. And this is one of the most important issues raised, that why all the case was prosecuted in this specifically trial court even if there are many politicians, would, 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 would cause the case to be judged, uh, to be decided by other courts, could be the Supreme Court, for instance, because there were many, many politicians being uh, investigated as well. So here I'm going to make a narrative where I can uh, go back in time, talk about the impeachment process about former President Dilma, the laws that were passed by this time, then we can go back, we can move forward and talk about Lula convictions in the Court of Appeal and the last laws that were passed by this government, this president that he's not legitimate to make so, so many important decisions in the Brazilian politics, especially, for instance, we have uh, passed an, an amendment to freeze budgetary expenditure in social welfare for 20 years. Education, public health care, all those issues that must be better debated among society. If it was in another country and the media was not, not uh, so, so much biased by their opinions, we would have people going to the streets and try to revoke those laws because they are very, very prejudicial for Brazilians. Um, I use this... Uh, bibliography, which is the book, all translated with more than 40 scholars talking about the, uh, the Lula's trial and all the other issues about Brazilian democracy right now. It's available. It's just to click on the link and you are directed uh, to them. So this is our president. Just to break <laughs> the ice, it's not Montegorimi Byrne, but he looks a little bit kind of. <laughs> this is our current president, Michel Temer. By his name, we uh, start to have fear because his name means fear. It's the verb to fear. So, I mean, I don't know if he's trustworthy, but we have some proofs, some evidence that maybe he's not. Because when Eduardo Cunha, the president of the House of Representatives, he started... Uh, the trial, the impeachment trial of pr former President Dilma, he decided to send a little letter about his loyalty to the former President Dilma, which is this letter, and I translated, and he said, 
I tell you right away that it's not necessary to publicly proclaim the necessity of my loyalty. However, in the continuation of this letter, he said, you know, you didn't give many tasks as a vice president and you don't trust in my party. So from now on, I'm not responsible for anything that is going to happen from this moment on. And what it means, he was from uh, PMDB party, which was the same party of the president of the House of Representatives, Eduardo Cunha, who initiated the process after the former president Tuma refused to acquit him and give support from the Workers' Party to the charge that he was being um, accused of. Especially, he was a trustee in a Switzerland bank account of $52 million. So this was the reason why he initiated the process against the former President Tuma. So he sent this letter and the process was already initiated because Eduardo Cunha received the petition about impeachment on December 2 and this letter was written on December 7. So here we have some link to try to understand the entire situation because I can't give a good framework about my arguments if I don't present all uh, the facts pre that preceded this moment where, that we are experiencing. So what were the charts about? About how she was enacting decrease in the uh, public expenditure. We didn't have the revenues that we were expecting because Brazil was passing through economic crisis and she was um, enacting those decrees to authorize public expenditure in the uh, social programs that Brazil have that are massive, uh, the biggest one that were ever created in the Brazilian government as Fome Zero and Minha Casa Minha Vida, which is a housing program, and many other programs that were financed by the government as well as the public banks. And the charges were that she committed a responsibility crime under a law from a law called uh, 1079 from a period of exception in Brazil. We didn't experience such a period of democracy as after the enactment of the Constitution of 1988. So, and she was accused of those charges of being, of enacting decrees authorizing public expenditure. And just after, a week after her impeachment, uh, they passed a law authorizing those same decrees. So now it's not illegal anymore because this law from 2016 says, and this happens all the time, sometimes the revenues are not what was predicted by the government, then they need to raise funds else, from elsewhere to keep the budgetary expenditure in order and to make um, the government trustworthy for the investors and the market and everything. So this is one opinion from Justice Barroso. He went to Yale and uh, he's a justice of our Supreme Court about uh, what is the impeachment process, that there would be no interference from the judiciary branch other than taking care of the procedural rules of the case, which means that they cannot interfere in the substantive discussion and debate on the issue. And uh, this is the ADPF 378 that raised all the questions from former President Dilma about uh, the adequacy of her impeachment process. So this is, uh, this guy wearing glasses is the former uh, president of the House of Representatives. He's in jail now. And uh, the ministers of the justices of our Supreme Court debating, I'm not trying to denounce something that was happening, it's just a picture that I found. And what we need to ask about is why we brought so many institutions from, for instance, uh, the American legal system to the Brazilian legal system after we internalized the conventions of Palermo and Merida, 
which are con international conventions giving a framework how to sue politicians in charge of corruptions, how to fight against white-collar crime, ideas brought from scholars are uh, Sutherland and Gabriel Tardy in criminology, how uh, white collar crime is different and deserve a, a different treatment from regular charges. And this was made by those legal institutions that already exist here in the US, which is plea bargaining and plea guilty. Basically, the person charged can be acquitted or have their sentence reduced if they collaborate with the judges and prosecutors, which is, it functions very well here in the United States. I mean, there are some arguments against a book about free market and law and democracy that all, as well here in the U.S. De debate why the U.S. have 2.2 2 million people incarcerated. Maybe the system is not working as I mean, in the way that was expected to. But at least here in the U.S., they have the jury trials, and the jury trials are a way to filter the evidence. So not everything that it's heard during the process in the discovery phase of the, the case go to the, ju to the jurors to hear, which is a, a rule coming from the Sixth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution that allows uh, the the jurors to just not make wrong inferences and not judge the person, judge the fact that uh, the person is in charge. So um, this quote is from this book, The Trial of Lula. Uh, this, the person who wrote this is my colleague in my institution. And we are debating how can the judge in the inquisitorial system that we still follow in our, in our criminal procedural code be able to have so many agreements in plea guilty, but plea guilty doesn't exist yet. It's going to be in the next new proce criminal procedure code. But at least the plea bargaining has been operating here in Brazil because people were in jail for two years to try to extract them confessions and uh, uh, give uh, put another people in charge in in the in this case. So this was uh, very debated on those past months. This is the triplex that caused it. This is the apartment, which was the apartment that Lula is accused to receive in exchange of um, deals that he made with corporations, which would be bribery and consequently would be uh, considered as a crime, a white collar crime. And uh, there is no deeds indicting him. Uh, putting him as owner of this apartment, but this is the main issue about his involvement in the Petrobras case. With what was the origin of the, I'm going to leave here. What was the origin of the car wash operation? Because we, I'm talking about two different topics. One is about uh, her impeachment, which, which was um, made by the uh, House of Representatives, the Senate, with the presidents of the Supreme Court. And the other issue is the car wash operation, which was a case uh, where many, many people were involved that started from, like Miss uh, Fine. So it called it car wash because it started from things that were happening in this gas station in Brasilia. So the trial court that was um, uh, handling this case is situated in another state, Paraná, in the city of Curitiba. This is the capital city of Brazil, Brasilia, and was the origin of the entire case because there was there were people exchanging dollars to give bribery to politicians, and this was operating there because they have a casa de câmbio. I don't know exactly the translation in in English of this. Exchange house? Yeah, currency oh, exchange. Okay, current ex exchange house. So this was the origin of the case. And then it, they started from an old investigation that was happening since 2013. Judge Morrow authorized to record 
uh, private communications that were happening among people that were in charge in this case. And it turns out that many, many politicians and many people from Petrobras, which is a public company uh, of drilling oil in Brazil, um, is involved in. So, and the judiciary branch was very straightforward that their role was with democracy, that they would not take an active role in this political process. But when they were selecting in what issues they would decide and which one they would not, the consequences were that they were in fact biased. Biased because we have this amendment, the Amendment 95, uh, freezing the budget for 20 years, the, the next 20 years, and they said that they would not pronounce about uh, this happening, that they were they they now have um, a, a case, it's a lawsuit that is is decided by the Supreme Court about the constitutionality uh, of this amendment, and it's the judicial review in Brazil, it's very broad, and I can, I mean, go further in these explanations, but we are going back and forth here to talk about the Supreme Court, what was happening during the impeachment process, as well in the trial court about Judge Moro. So this is, was another decree that uh, ILO uh, said that it's going back in time in the slavery issues, because we have uh, a decree from the Ministry of Labor saying that uh, the bars to recognize sl slave labor is not as narrow as it was before, and this is a uh, retrocession in our politics. So many, many things were happening while this president, that it's not legitimate to decide what he's deciding, uh, came to power. So this is the first very, very important uh, penal case, which is the Missalan, which was uh, uh, charged against politicians in the House of Representatives in the Senate, in which they were receiving bribery to pass laws. So in this lawsuit, the Supreme Court broke many, many of our uh, uh, due process of law clauses about criminal charges, in which situations the person would be, uh, the judges in the judiciary branch would be violating the, the Constitution, and they decide, they gave many exceptions in this case about what would be um, the, what would be the, the requisites to, to sue someone in criminal charges. And uh, the Judge Moro, he worked directly with one of the, the justices in the Supreme Court. So when he came back from, to his trial court, he had ideas about what the Supreme Court was doing in those issues, and with help of the prosecutor's office, which is who present the, um, the investigations to the judge, with help of the prosecutor's office, they started what was known uh, of car wash operation. And why, why car wash operation has everything to do with the impeachment process? Because whereas uh, uh, the judge, the trial judge was releasing private records from the mm -hmm. former president Lula and former president Dilma, the press and the media was engaging the society to manifest on the streets against the former president. So uh, what was the source for all the anger created against the former president Dilma? Uh, misogynist uh, claims about her that she was hysterical, that she didn't know how to conduct the country, that she was not uh, making a good government at this time, came from all those releases that were made during the um, car wash operation. And here um, I'm sitting the Ato Institucional number five, which was 
um, a decree expedited by the dictatorship back to 1964 that um, violated all our Brazilian civil rights and individual rights back to 1964 under the excuse that they were fighting corruption. And here we realize that fighting co against corruption, it's not every time uh, a good way of defending society. Corruption must be fighted and this must be made by the judiciary branch, but not with all the help that they have from the press, because when you release all the information that is happening in criminal case where the defendants, they have the right to be, rights to be preserved, especially to be convicted after a trial and beyond reasonable, reasonable doubt. And if people are being pr uh, prosecuted, knowing what are going to be the results, we, we can assume that the court is biased and the person must uh, have the right to have another trial. So this is the preamble of this act, just to go back in time and see that history uh, repeats in Brazil because many, many people still believe that the dictatorship in Brazil was not as bad as it looked like, that there was not torture, and refusing all, all those efforts made by the democratic governments to prove that we experienced a state of exception. <coughs> Oops. So this is, uh, in the car wash case, the federal prosecutor handling the case, was presenting the evidence against the former president Lula. So the way that they were connecting uh, the president with the illegal operations and corruption charges that were happening were uh, really, really doubt doubtfully. And uh, many people made lots of jokes with this or organogram because it's really connecting Lula with everything that was happening even if the evidence, those 238 pages, were not enough to clearly demonstrate where is the connection between the apartment that we received in bribery and uh, himself. And here we go back to the justice of the Supreme Court debating in one of his essays how to allocate power. What is the power given by the Constitution to the judiciary branch in Brazil? This is very, very important, uh, very important question to raise because we live uh, as well here in the US a system of separation of power and checks and balances. So the constitution gives the, give the power to the judiciary branch to control all the acts that can violate the constitution. And is the reason why the judiciary branch took such an active role in society, because all the issues could uh, uh, be fighted and defended in civil cases, in lawsuits, the right of housing, the right, we have right of universal health care in Brazil, we have the right of housing, we have labor rights. So we have so, so many rights that it's, it's required by the judiciary branch to, de to decide all those issues. So here he is debating how to allocate power. So it's not to say that the judiciary branch is not responsible to uh, take those cases because it, it is their role by our constitution. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, back to the car wash operation, we uh, start to ask uh, what is welfare, which is using legal mechanisms of uh, suing people to fight against corruption, but meanwhile, trying to bias people through political views. And this is very, very important because even if the judge must be impartial, mean, most of the times the judge is not neutral. This is impossible because his subject, subjectivity is all the time in everything that decides. How can we filter the role of the judge in a democratic society by argumentation, claiming that the judge must follow the constitution and must have strong make strong efforts to have good arguments in, in his decision. This is the way that we can filter, because in Brazil, the judiciary branch, the prosecutors, or even public defenders, we are not elected. 
it's all made through public examination. So people go, they take a, a very important uh, place in power in Brazil without being elected. So this is the very, very challenging balance between uh, uh, giving answers to society, but at the same time as a counter-majoritarian power to preserve uh, the meaning of our yeah. constitution. Many yeah. times the judge must go against what the mass media wants, against what the society wants, because many times it's to preserve the rights of small people, of discriminated groups. And this is the importance of the judiciary branch, to follow the rules according to the constitution. So because it's carnival in Brazil, there are, <laughs> there are uh, scholars in samba presenting the former, uh, the current president as a vampire. In any case, he's not going to stay for long because um, in October mm. we, we have new elections. And depending on the results, we are going to know who is going to be the next president. We believe uh, without Lula running the election this year, there is no other way to, uh, other than a uh, argue that this is not a democratic state. We are experiencing a state of ex exception. And no conspiracy theories, please, because this is the episode from 2001 about the Trump election. There is no such a thing as computational information, no cyborgs amplifying news in the Twitter. And I mean, just to break the ice. And if I'm going to leave the last minutes for questions because I know that it's a very controversial issue. Thank you. <laughs>